closed loop systems on the NHS by next year. A type one runner completes an epic run across America challenge. Plus meet John Robert Wilkden who lost his sight due to diabetes but still managed to be an award winning designer. All that and more coming up in today's T1D News Update. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and this is a regular series right here where I bring you up to date with all the latest news in the Type 1 world. So I'm going to tell you about all the latest tech developments, research too. I'll tell you about amazing people doing amazing things for the community. So if you're into that sort of stuff, then do make sure you subscribe to this channel and leave a like on this and all of my other videos. Um, and of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's stories. That's what the comments box is for. First up today, we've got a cautionary tale, which many of us will know all too well. What looks like a relatively minor illness can actually turn out to be a severe case of DKA and a diagnosis of a lifelong condition. But one mum spotted the signs of type 1 diabetes in a news article in a local paper and got her son to hospital just in time. Emma Day noticed some changes in her son's behaviour and that he'd lost a little bit of weight and remembered a story that she read in the Grimsby Telegraph about someone who sadly didn't spot the signs in time. She took her son Charlie to the doctors and a simple test confirmed her fears and even though she managed to catch it in time, the doctor said that had she not acted, Charlie would have likely not survived the weekend. You'll be glad to know that Charlie is doing well and he's got a CGM and an insulin pump. He's now four years old and getting on just fine. But a reminder of the four T's, which we should all be shouting about often because they save lives. Toilet, are you going to the toilet frequently or wetting the bed? Thirsty, do you need to drink constantly? Tired, are you feeling more tired than usual without reason? Thinner, are you losing weight in an unexplained way? Those are the T's. Take note of them and make sure you tell other people too because those four T's do save lives. Now, news about those closed loop systems on the way and when you might be able to get one from your NHS, that's all coming up in a moment. I just wanted to let you know though first that I tried for the very first time a constant glucose monitor. It's uh, one of my recent videos here on my YouTube channel and you can click the card on the screen, I think there maybe, um, if you want to check that out. And speaking of CGMs, the, medic uh, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, you probably know that as the MHRA has released new advice for any Dexcom G6 sensor users who experience skin irritation from the patches. Now it's not a new thing that sometimes the, the adhesive which sticks the, the sensor to your skin can cause some irritation and that's something that many of us just you know put up with but if you're using barrier creams to obviously stop the irritation. The MHRA say that this could be affecting the performance of the device. So they released some new advice to help patients and healthcare professionals manage uh, skin irritation without disruption of the performance of the device itself. So according to the new advice, if you're experiencing skin reactions, you've got to contact your healthcare professional for advice to determine if you should firstly continue use of the device. Uh, you've got to report skin reactions to the device manufacturer and uh, to the MHRA via the yellow card scheme. Now, obviously there's not a great deal of what you should do in terms of information if you do get that skin irritation, but I did get this story from uh, the Diabetes UK website and they've got a number um, that you can call to talk to them about this issue. You know, if you don't want your healthcare professional to take away your Dexcom, um, ring this number instead and they should hopefully put you in the right direction. So that number is 0345 123 2399. It's on the screen. But again, in case you're just listening to this, it's 0345 123 2399. Next today then is the Texan who ran from Disneyland to Disney World to raise awareness for type 1 diabetes. On the 7th of April, 59 year old Don Muchow, I hope I'm saying that right, completed a goal that has been years in the making. He spent a year and two months running across the states while making stops at both Disneyland and Disney World. Now Don had actually feared exercise because of his type 1 diabetes. He was first diagnosed in 1972 and that actually took him up until 2004 
you're gonna have to do the maths, um, to give it a try. Initially, he had expected to make the nearly 3,000 mile run in 100 days, but COVID had other plans. He finally crossed the finish line to a round of applause from about 300 Disney staff and a fast pass to his favorite ride. Now next up, another inspirational story is John Robert Wilton, who has had every almost diabetes complication in the book. He lost his sight for a time, he lost his leg, a leg, and is a kidney transplant patient. And this year he survived a serious bout of COVID-19. He spoke to me about his experiences on the latest episode of the All For One podcast. Um, I've been a type one diabetic since I was eight years old, which was 53 years ago. I was diagnosed in 1967. At that time, my parents were told that they shouldn't expect me to reach 30. Um, there wasn't a lot known about the disease other than the complications that it caused. But, but, but as far as the treatment is concerned, the treatment was um, sophomoric at best. Um, and, um, you know, like all kids, when I was eight, nine, and even in my teens, I, I didn't want to be a diabetic. Hmm. And so I did all the things that were not supposed to do, ate all the stuff that I shouldn't have eaten, um, which there were consequences for later on in life. And um, some of those consequences include, um, I had retinopathy in my early 20s. I spent four years fighting that, having not only surgeries on my eyes, vitrectomies, which removed the vitreous gel from the back of the eye, but also a lot of laser work to cauterize the leaky blood vessels. Um, and after four years worth of that work, I mean, there were times during that period where I was totally blind. Hmm. Um, but after four years, the vision was restored in one eye. I'm, I, am, I would have been since that time totally blind in the other eye. What happened was the retina tore right down the middle from, from the scar tissue that was caused from the laser work. Yeah. And that seems to be a very common circumstance with diabetics that get retinopathy. It's like you lose the vision in one eye and you are blessed to have remaining the vision in the other. And that episode is available now right here on YouTube and every other major podcast provider. And finally today, according to JDRF, hybrid closed loop technology for type one diabetes could be available on the NHS by 2022. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, otherwise known as NICE, you know, those guidelines, the NICE guidelines that you have to meet to get a certain um, piece of kit, has confirmed, they have confirmed, that it will be appraising hybrid closed loop technology for type 1 diabetes, meaning that it could be available on the NHS in England as early as next year. Can you believe that 2022 is next year? Time is slipping away. Anyway, hybrid closed loop technology uses an algorithm to take glucose readings from a continuous glucose monitor and calculate how much insulin is needed, which it then delivers via a pump. The pump automatically adjusts insulin delivery if blood glucose starts to go too low or too high, such as after exercising or during sleep. Now, I could definitely use this because I'm suffering with several like un unnoticed nighttime hypos right now, and it's kind of scary, to be honest. Now, this device, though, it's important to mention, is not fully automated, but it's, it's very close, and the benefits are numerous. Closed-loop technology not only eases the daily burden of type 1, but it can also help minimize the risk of long-term complications. So, how can you get one from your clinic? Well, we don't know the nice criteria just yet, but be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'll tell you just as soon as I know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell me what you thought about the stories in the comments section below. If you wanted to support my channel, then, uh, or of course, subscribe and like my videos, but then there's also links uh, down below to my Patreon, 
where you can support me for as little as one pound per month to make more and better type 1 diabetes content or you can grab some of the type 1 diabetes accessories and clothing designed by me in my teespring and spreadshirt shops i'll throw some pictures on the screen for you to see what i've been making but that's all from me i'll be back next week on my youtube channel i'll see you then